Hi, I'm Carol Graham with Praying for Miracles with Carol, and I'm so excited as we're going to continue our series, the last three videos on not giving place to the devil in the arena of fear, anxiety, stress, or any other of the things that so often try to overtake us. Ephesians 4.27 says, give no place to the devil. So the first thing we think, well, of course I don't give any place to the devil. Jesus is master of my life. I choose to follow Jesus. And yet very often our actions are the opposite. I'm going to explain that in detail today. And I think you will gain a new understanding of who you are in Christ. In this series, I hope you watch all three in the series of the understanding of who you are because of the authority God gave you. The authority that you have over anything that the enemy would try to put on you. The Greek translation of the word place, when it says give no place to the enemy, is this a spot or a foothold now if we choose to believe the lies the enemy tries to tell us and it is a choice then we are given giving him a spot or a foothold and what does he do at that spot oh he loves to have it grow and bring in all kinds of doubt and bring in fear, and bring in anxiety, and bring in feelings that you're not good enough, or you're not a good enough Christian, or you don't do enough, or, and on and on and on. And we get so wrapped up in the lies that he's telling us that we forget what Jesus has done for us. And when Jesus said it is a finished work, it is a finished work. He did it for us. So we don't have to struggle in the arena that the enemy would choose to have us in. But we can be victorious in the arena we choose to live in, which is the arena of what Christ has done for us. The arena of strength and not fear. Okay, so we're going to break this down a little bit. When Jesus rose from the dead, you understand that he gave you the authority to use his name, the word, and his precious blood. I also did a series on the three weapons of mass destruction that we have against the enemy. We have the name, the word, and the blood. So as you listen to this, this series of three, you might want to also listen to those three and get a real grasp and understanding of not only who you are in Christ, but the weapons that he has given you. And those weapons destroy all the works of the enemy. And those weapons have been transmitted to us for our use. We have the right the God-given right, the God-given authority to use the power that he has given us over what the enemy would try to inflict on our family, our homes, our marriages, our finances, our minds, our sicknesses, our diseases, anything that would try to rob us from having the joy that Jesus wants to give us when we have the understanding of who we are in him. This is the arena we will learn to live in rather than the arena of doubt and fear and illness and sickness. If any of you know my story, which I share in my memoir, Battered Hope, 
there's 12 chapters and 12 different varied, very varied circumstances that my life was in where the enemy tried to rob, steal, destroy on every level from having cancer to destroying our family to robbing all our finances and on and on. But he didn't win and he can't win in your life either. When you understand the authority God has given you, and when you understand what you can do, not to run from him, but to run towards the enemy with your shield of faith, with your weapons that God gave you, with weapons of mass destruction, the name, the word, and the blood. The thing that I want you to understand in this video today is that when we constantly give Satan credit for what he is supposedly doing or trying to do or to inflict on us, we are actually giving him, giving him praise. Now, never in your wild imagination would you consider giving the enemy praise for what he's doing. And yet we do. How do we do that? I'm going to give you two statements, and I want you to see the difference. The first statement I think I hear more often than any other, and that is, please pray for me. The devil's been after me this week, and I'm so weak from the battle. I am struggling. Have you said that? Do you know anyone who has said that? Now, just as I described in the and all the things the enemy tried to put on me in my memoir, Battered Hope. You can either accept that demise and wallow in it and beg God to help you and ask your Christian friends to help you and pray and, and worry and all the other emotions that are involved around that. Or you can make this statement. Instead of asking for prayer, turn that around. And make it a statement of praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your Son, Jesus, who took my shame, my guilt, my struggles, my fears, who took all those things upon himself so that I can live in victory that I have the power over all the works of the enemy, not because I'm good enough or I read my Bible enough or I pray enough, but because of what Jesus did on the cross. And so no matter what he tries to put on me, he has no authority. Because when Jesus died, he gave us the authority. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you sent your Son to die for me, not just to remove my sins, but to give me the rights and privileges I have as your child. I choose to walk in victory. I choose not to walk in defeat. I thank you, God, that I have that understanding. Make this your prayer. And when we begin to see what we have in Christ because of what he did at Calvary for us, we will have a whole new understanding of who we are in Christ, what privileges we have, what authority we have, and how to use that authority. And also it'll bring us joy instead of defeat. Basically what you are doing here is maintaining a stubborn faith. So no matter what would try to come at you, you maintain a stubborn faith. And where does faith come from? The Bible tells us faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. So when you take the Word, the God-given, rhema-spoken Word of God, 
and you stand on that word and you do not waver from that word and get the understanding deep within your spirit that you have the right, you have the God-given authority against anything the enemy would try to put on you. I mean, I just get excited sharing this. I'm sure you could hear it in my voice. And I'll tell you something else. If that wasn't true, then God's a liar. So if you choose not to believe it, basically you're saying God's a liar. If you choose to say things like, well, it may work for you, but it doesn't work for me. Well, that's the same thing. God's no respecter of person. The same faith, he gives us each one a measure of faith. Each one of us has that same faith. He doesn't say, well, give a little bit over here and a little bit to this person. And this person I know really understands. So I've given him more. No, he has given to each one of us the measure of faith, the God given measure of faith to use against the enemy. We know God cannot lie. When we get that understanding in our hearts, in our spirits, that God can't lie, that his word is yea and amen for all of us. All of us have been given a measure of faith. God is not a respecter of persons. He gives to us because of what his son did for us. And the enemy does not want you to know that. So you can throw it in his face. You are not in his domain. You control that domain because of who you are and understand who you are in Christ because the power and the authority that Jesus gave to you. And the enemy resents interference, especially if you've been in that arena for a long time and have chosen to believe the lie. I get emails daily from people mm -hmm who are distraught and discouraged and weak. And they feel like they have, you know, that everything has been stripped to them. And they concentrate, sadly, on what they don't have. But I, and as you know, in my book, Battered Hope, and all the incredible struggles, life-threatening experiences that I had, I did not stay there. I refused to be there because I had an understanding that Jesus and his name, his word, his blood is about above anything that the enemy would try to put on me. And that's all you need to do to get out of that arena of doubt and fear is to get into the arena of faith by taking the scriptures that God has given you. And if you go to my website, prayingmiracles.com, you can download various scriptures that you can pray and experience what God has promised you, what he has given you, because you choose to believe in him. And so the enemy has no right. He has no influence. He is done complete over. When you grasp that, your life is going to change. You get a stubborn faith. And there's nothing he hates more. And nothing that makes you feel stronger as a Christian is a stubborn faith. Believing, choosing to believe God's promises. Ephesians, the sixth, the sixth chapter, and I know most of you understand the sixth chapter of Ephesians, where it points out the armor that we have. Read those, those verses again and realize that the armor God has given you, the shield of faith, and the rest of the armor, there is no protection for the backside. You are not to run from the enemy. You are to run and attack him because of your authority. You do not have to turn and run. Let him know you understand who you are in Christ. You have the 
the authority. He is not welcome into your arena at all, in any way, in any shape, in any form. God does not want us to re retrieve and run. He wants us to attack. And we do that with the name, the word, and the blood. Exercise your authority. And I'll leave you with this thought. Conditions exist very often in our lives because we allow them. But God has given us all the tools to change those conditions. God promises us, and I know everyone knows this verse, in Isaiah 54, 17, which says, No weapon. No weapon that is formed against you. And that can be in a variety of things, in your life in general, in your natural human existence, in your body, in your mind. Any weapons from whatever direction they try to overtake us. No weapon that is formed against you can prosper. When you understand that you have the authority and the right to not accept those conditions in your life. There are many weapons of warfare that the enemy would try to use to defeat us, but we have the three greatest weapons of mass destruction, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the word of God. Thank you for listening to Praying for Miracles with Carol. Thank you.